morning families, morning kids. It's so good to see you again. Last weekend we celebrated Easter. Normally it would be a four day weekend, part of the school holidays. This year that was a little bit different. But what we celebrated and what we remembered and what we learned from God's word was exactly the same. We were reminded that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, all of God's anger with our sin went on to Jesus and he died. But three days later, he rose again. He is the risen king. Now, let's think about a king. Close your eyes for a moment. If I asked you to draw a picture of a king, what would you be drawing? Maybe you would be drawing something on their head, a crown. Maybe the king would be sitting on a fancy seat called a throne. Maybe the king would be in a palace full of gold and pictures and just amazingly beautiful stuff. The king would also have a kingdom, a city, people who lived there. Now, if Jesus is the king, we should figure out what the Bible says about him and his kingdom. So I'm going to read with a book that's going to be up on my, my left. For 40 days after his resurrection, Jesus taught about God's kingdom. He told his chosen followers that they had kingdom work to do. He said that although they must, he must go away for a time, they must wait for a gift he would send for help to do that work. So the kingdom of Jesus has Jesus as the king and he has followers. And these followers have work to do. How? What work? Where are they going to work? And what was the gift? And suddenly Jesus left them. He was lifted up into the sky. He took his throne in heaven and began his kingly rule. His followers went back to Jerusalem and waited. They waited and waited for the promised gift. Ten days passed. Well, that answers some of our questions. Where is Jesus' throne? In heaven. Where is he ruling? From heaven. And he's ruling right now. But what about this gift? What about the work that the followers need to do? So we carry on reading. Then they heard something. There was a loud sound, like the wind blowing. It came from heaven, filled the room. Then they saw something. Little flames of fire floated overhead and came to rest on each of them. Then they said something. They were praising God in languages they had never learned. The promised gift, the Holy Spirit, had come to them. The gift, the Holy Spirit had come to them. The Holy Spirit was going to help Jesus' followers, his people, tell other people about Jesus' great kingdom. Right there and then, the Holy Spirit helped him to speak in languages so that everybody could understand. The good news spread and spread and spread. The word was, teached in Jerus was preached in Jerusalem and went out all across the land. It spread to the people in Judea. It spread to Samaria too. Later, the Apostle Paul spread it as far away as Rome. Far and near, people from every nation were beginning to follow Jesus as their king. The king's kingdom was growing. People from everywhere were starting to hear the word. They were starting to hear the good news. People from different languages and cultures. People were coming together from everywhere to be children of the king. Now, we don't live in Judea or Samaria. Rome, for that fact. In fact, we're really far away. So what does it mean for us to be the king's kids in Midrand or Gauteng or in South Africa? Well, if we're the king's kids, we need to know the king. We need to learn about him. We need to love him. We need to know his rules. We need to know his priorities. So we're going to need to read our Bibles. If you're a little bit smaller, you have a kid's Bible with pictures in it. If you're a bit older, you have a whole lot of words that you can read. King's kids need to know the king. So we need to make sure we keep learning each and every day. Well, what else can we do? 
just like Jesus' followers, we can tell other people about Jesus the King. With the help of the Holy Spirit and with God's Word, we can tell other people about Jesus the King and what it means for us to be in His kingdom. Now the adults have had a little challenge sent by Royden this week, that each one must reach one. And just because we're kids doesn't mean we can't do that too. So what each one reach one means that each one of us needs to reach out to one other person and say to them, hey, remember Jesus is the king. Remember that Jesus loves you. Remember that if we're the king's kids, we're part of a family together. We might not be in the same room or the same church anymore, and that's sad, but that doesn't change the fact that we are the followers of the king and we're talking to other people about his kingdom. So why don't you also, each one, reach one? Remind someone Jesus is the king. Remind them that he loves them. Remind them that you love them. And let's be Jesus' followers, telling other people about the king. But to help us do that, we also need to pray. So let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the king. Thank you that we all have a part to play in your kingdom. We can be your children and we can live a life serving you and we can tell others about you. Please help us to trust you, Jesus. Please help us to tell others about you. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a good week. Keep learning about Jesus. And remember, each one, retry. Thank you.